All right, we're going to switch it up today. We're going to install a new weekly episode here on this channel called What's Up With The Mavs, where I just do a weekly update on breaking news, rumors, etc., stuff like that. So without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so this is episode one of this weekly installment called What's Up With The Mavs. Basically, I'm going to just run through some of the things that I've seen throughout the week, some of the notes and rumors and stuff like that is broken throughout the week or something that's just kind of worth mentioning just to keep us up to date with the Dallas Mavericks and whatever is going on. So without further ado, let's get into the first item that I got for today's episode. All right, so the very first thing that comes to mind is like, when is this NBA schedule going to release? Like, I'm, I'm already excited to know what the schedule is going to look like, see what games I could kind of pencil myself in to see which ones I can attend. What, you know, when we're going to get these rivalry matchups, Christmas games, season opening games, stuff like that, man. I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, but I'm going to show this little screenshot I got right here. It's from the, the Sporting News. They said, when will the NBA schedule be released? And it kind of mentions that uh, last season that they released it on August 17th, 2022. And then this previous year, they released it around August 20th, 2021. So that kind of gives us an idea of what to expect. We should be getting this schedule here coming up soon within the next month, hopefully around, you know, August 10th to August 20th, around that range. So um, that's kind of one of the next things to look forward to as we ramp up for this Dallas Mavericks season. So I just wanted to point that out there. So look forward to this NBA schedule release. All right, let's get into topic number two. All right, so topic number two, it stems from the Luka Doncic weight loss article that was released by Tim Cato and also uh, confirmed by Tim McMahon and then also alluded to by uh, Brian Damaris. Maverick's key figures in the front office have quote unquote spoken to Luka Doncic about his weight and decreasing his preferred playing weight uh, for the summer coming up so he could come into shape <laughs> for the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, then Brian Damaris, as I'm showing you on the, on this screenshot here, uh, Brian Damaris also spoke to about reaching his weight of 245 pounds uh, for his playing weight in his upcoming season. I think 240, 245 is obviously a good weight for Lucas size and what he has, uh, what is capable of and being able to maintain the ability to post people up take it to the hole with with strength and being able to finish with strength so they're just trying to get him into the top tier shape is this like news i don't know is this something worth going crazy about i don't know because the dude looks like he's already in shape this offseason so far getting ready for fiba obviously he got engaged so he's gonna be getting married soon all that aside I do think he understands the, the magnitude of this season coming up for the Dallas Mavericks besides his World Cup uh, aspirations. But knowing the team that he got now, knowing how they how they kind of failed in the previous season, I I, I hope this isn't uh, a thing or a narrative any anymore moving forward. But Luka Doncic does have to maintain his uh, being in shape and weight and all that, whatever the case may be. But um, I think just coming back to the States is what affects him the most, uh, being able to retain and maintain that weight. Shout out to Nick and Sam's uh, constantly giving this man all the meals he wants. But yeah, man, uh, I think this is a good thing. If it is a legit thing, I hope he could maintain a good playing weight. That way he could run with the team because this team is going to want to run. But yeah, man, so hopefully Luca stay in shape for the Mavericks upcoming season. All right, so I want to share this clip from the Take That With You podcast featuring Brian Damaris and Mark Followell. Check it out. Maxi and Holmes. Okay. So that, that, I think, is her Tim May rotation, as of now. Those are the players that are on the roster. That leaves Hardy, who I think Hardy and Seth will interchange minutes. If Seth's injured or not playing as well, then Hardy will get more run. But I, I, to me, right now, Hardy's just on the outside of that rotation. But that, I think, maybe towards later parts of the season could change. But to, I just think, you know, you're going to have a 10 man rotation. Somebody has to be out. I'll so, as you've seen in that clip, Damaris, and, and, and we have to give Damaris some legitimacy as to how close he is with the team how plugged in he is with the team whether you like it or not he is plugged into the team and so you have to kind of take everything that he says either with a grain of salt or take it as all right this is information he's being told and kind of throwing it out there to us to kind of prepare so there's a lot of ways this organization can move and it's just not ours you know what i'm saying every organization does this but to mention that hardy is quote unquote for him in his words, that Hardy would not be in the top 10 man rotation is a little bit disappointing. I do think Hardy needs to be a part of the rotation. 
I think him taking a step back for Seth Curry or Tim Hardaway Jr. is a little bit backwards thinking for us in a way. I, I do need to see what he could give us. I'm not saying we need to rely on a second year player a lot, but I'm just saying we need to have him involved. He needs to be in the rotation and not just the 10 man rotation. That's just my two cents, my perspective on it. I find it interesting to hear how confidently Damaris cascaded that information, whether it was from him or given to him. So it is interesting. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it is interesting nonetheless to take into account when it comes to this, this upcoming season. You got to think of it. The 10 players he mentioned, I'm like, damn, those are, those are going to be the main guys if Hardy is not out beating Curry in the, the minutes uh, department. So I fully believe that Hardy's going to be able to shine this, this, uh, this season. And whether it's Seth Curry or Hardy getting the most minutes, I'm going to lean Hopefully it is Hardy, but I don't think you could go wrong having them inter interject in a way where they kind of interchangeable. I just don't like the idea that he is he would be the odd man out of that 10 man rotation. But that's just me. And then in that same clip, Damaris stated that Omax is going to be a rotational player. Um, then you have Seth, Tim, Omax, and yes, Omax is going to be a rotation player. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. He will have more of a, a median impact. We're going to be doing some really good night. And he says he's going to be have more of an impact quicker than lively. I think a lot of us have felt that a lot of us have thought that he just seamlessly fits into what this team needs to do. And I could totally see Omax not only being a rotational player by the end of the season, but I could definitely see him being a starter. I believe in his potential. I believe in his upside. I've spoken about this at length in multiple previous shows that his ability to stop on a dime is going to be a massive thing. His ability to take it to the hole is a massive thing. He just got to show up his shooting, obviously get some more experience in the NBA. But I think over time, he's going to be one of those impact players for the Dallas Mavericks and especially the type of player that we've been needing to pair Luka with. All right, so I want to show you this clip from the JJ Reddick, the old man in the three podcast with Grant Williams, speaking about Devin Booker and the Dallas Mavericks. 17 or something like that, that game, bring more. And I'm going to talk to Charles to team game the book because for some reason he always likes to talk to our church. And I think that actually helps because we're going to Dallas now. And Phoenix and him and Luca already have this little, little, little beef going, whatever else you call it. So I might be able to join you on some, on some kind of competitive vibes. All right, so you, you saw in that clip, you could kind of tell Grant Williams is looking forward to the opportunity to get involved in the Luka Doncic, Devin Booker beef. I mean, there is also some beef or a little bit of tension between Kyrie Irving and Devin Booker as well. So... I like this. I like the idea that he's willing to take on, you know, the Mavs issues for for the team and taking it onto the court. You can say he's a competitive guy. I mean, you saw he get him. He got in the face of Jimmy Butler, right? He, he's not shy of it, not shy to talk trash. So we definitely need that dog. And that is why we got him. We finally got a dog on his team, man. So excited to see that. Excited to hear that. Looking forward to the season. And that's why I hope that is why I hope that the Mavericks open the season against the Suns again because I would just love to see those fireworks. All right, the next item it is uh, the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Luka Doncic, uh, to give you a Mavs perspective, I mean, we could talk about Dwight Powell when he plays and uh, any other Mavericks that are playing at Klee, but doesn't like he's going to be playing because Schroeder don't even want him a part of the team. But Luka Doncic, right, our superstar, the guy we need to watch, he is playing August 26th, around 6.30 a.m., and I am the Mavericks pregame show host, but I will not be the Slovenia pregame show host this summer. But definitely looking forward to Luka playing in the World Cup. And uh, I would say there's a chance for him to get the, the gold medal with Serbia basically playing nobody and a lot of the teams not having a lot of firepower. Giannis is not going to play. The American team didn't send their A team out there. So I think if Luka can really step up to the plate and play at an unreal unconscious level i can see him winning the whole damn thing so there is that for the summer additionally we want to talk about another dallas maverick i just recently did a statue video where i want to go see a statue dirk Nowitzki is being enshrined into the in the naismith is it the naismith basketball hall of fame let me confirm okay it's the naismith memorial basketball hall of fame which will be held between august 11th and august 12th you got Dwayne Wade, Dirk Nowitzki, Popovich, Tony Parker, Paul Gasol, Hall of Famers, without a doubt. So can't wait to see Dirk going into the Hall of Fame and his Hall of Fame speech. So shout out to Dirk. Saw so a statue. A statue was beautiful, man. I, I didn't think it was going to be as detailed as it was in person as I saw it on video. But to see it in person was amazing. So 
looking forward to whatever day he is enshrined into the hall of fame it doesn't say on the reports that i saw but august 11th or the 12th he will be inducted into the naismith memorial basketball hall of fame and then the last two items i want to touch on quickly is the kyrie irvin uh drew league debut he got a triple double there was this one play where he kind of threw it off the backboard stretched back with his arm trying to bring it back and yam it home i'm like all right kyrie like who is this man you know what i'm saying whole different kyrie shout out to kyrie playing in drew league i'm just glad he didn't come out injured that is really my main concern when playing in the drew league but you got a triple double so bravo to kyrie slash uncle drew the next item is this is I don't know what this is anymore because it keeps being talked about, keeps getting regurgitated. It is this whole Clint Capella trade rumors. He is back on quote unquote the trade market or that the Atlanta Hawks are willing to listen to deals once again. I don't know if the Mavericks are going to be able to get it done. I don't know if any of these teams are motivated to get it done. It would be nice to have him on the squad, but I could go another couple of months without hearing about these trade rumors. I'm, I'm over it. I just need to see them do it. I think if Atlanta wants to get rid of him, go ahead and get rid of him. We got Tim Hardaway and two second round picks for you. Like, let's just get this deal done. I know they've been flirting with Toronto and trying to get Siakam, but is that really going to do anything to help us facilitate getting Capella? I'm not sure. But if they are, they need to really get on the phone with Toronto, see if that's what they want to do. If not, they need to move on and let us go ahead and get Click Capella from the Atlanta Hawks. I doubt they just want to give him up. I doubt Atlanta Hawks fans want to just give him up, but there's that the clint capella rumors we'll see what that turns out all right guys so this has been your what's up with the mavs weekly episode let me know what you think in the comments below should i continue to do this every week every wednesdays and if y'all didn't like it let me know as well because i don't have to do this every week if y'all didn't like it but yeah y'all let me know man i'm open to any feedback any comments questions stuff like that anything you want me to add to this it has been your boy tgk you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, wherever you want to find me, you'll find me in the description below. Anyway, guys, it's been your boy TGK. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one.